Lionsgate, sent a several page PDF for explaining everything, explaining the other artists and who the letterers were and what kind of feel they wanted for each DVD. There were four artists assigned the covers and the outside of the steelbooks and then the four lettering artists who did the insides. I absolutely love that all of the artists on this project were female artists. Because the series is so female driven, female led with Jennifer Lawrence Katniss's character, so powerful for females, I just thought using female artists as well from around the world, all different styles, I just thought it was so cool. It's a um, really one of a great tribute actually for the movies and for the character Katniss. I just felt like it gave the project itself much more importance and it, it was just even more exciting to be a part of it. I did the cover of the, of the of the first movie in the in the global steelbook. I was very really lucky that they called me for this one because there is a lot to do uh, on Hunger Games. I volunteer as tribute. It was um, a scene very important when they when she said I am I volunteer and I had to create you know a portrait of her like look straight to the camera. The the idea was pretty clear in my head. Uh, with Jennifer Lawrence, with Katniss, she looks straight to the camera, but I made two ideas. Both had, you know, the look with a lot of emotions in her eyes, with a lot of bravery. I think it was important, uh, all the emotions she had in, in her eyes. The color that I used, um, the fire, uh, actually it's like kind of, kind of a fire around her, you know, to express, you know, the bravery that she had, uh, a lack of fire that go against the rules, you know, can, can you can't stop. And the blue and, uh, and the orange, they got a big contrast together, you know, all the colors. And with the, the booking J, there, there is two contrasts be, uh, between her life uh, before and life after, you know, like it's, a, it's a contrasting colors.เอ่อของพาร์ทแคชชิ่งไฟล์ค่ะก็อาจจะต้องมีเวลาเนี่ยในการทบทวนใจความของพาร์ทของเราเองว่าเออเราต้องการที่จะสื่อออกมายังไง
that I really love doing that because I absolutely love drawing people and likenesses and she's got an incredible face to draw. Yeah, I think it's the resolve and the purpose that she has in the final scene when she's decided the avenue that she's going to take and she's determined to take that. And so that scene was really important to show. Lionsgate mentioned the red and yellow, the yellow being primrose. So there's obviously some innocence and freshness in there, but the backdrop of it is against this very, very harsh, bold red, which is obviously a color of pain and fury and boldness. Um, so those two colors working together alongside one another. And so I feel, I feel pretty lucky that I ended up doing the DVD that had to have those two colors in it because they're two colors I use all the time anyway, I love them. I was part of the first collaboration. So my phrase was I volunteer as tribute. So it was the first in the series. Um, and so being my favorite of all of the films, I was very excited to be working on that particular one as well. So the process that I normally work with uh, is starting with two or three sketches. And in this instance, uh, obviously, because we're working with the steel box, it needed to, you know, work across the two covers on the interior. Um, so I think there were two or three different options that I explored. I've actually got one of the pencil sketches here, if you can see that. And then the team selected one of those to develop into color and move on from the pencil sketches. The letter forms are like little pictures in themselves. And uh, even though we might be familiar with different styles of typography and the feeling that you get when you see them, you often don't think about, you know, actually crafting them and the little nuances and changes that you can make to change the feeling. So in this particular instance, the option that was selected with this kind of like tall sans serif style type, you know, I wanted it to be able to fill the whole space in the, in the case to have like this big voice, I guess. So there was like a strength in the letter forms. They're these like tall, bold, sans serif style letters, but then also to have like a softness with the illustration and a warmth and an optimism with these illustration elements. It was fun to integrate little kind of Easter eggs hidden within there. And then these were like those those wasps that got knocked down and started to attack Katniss at one point. And there's little arrows that are hidden inside here as well. The different foliage, uh, obviously because of the setting and, you know, placing the flowers around Rue in that like amazing scene. So in one of the earlier sketches, I think I included a deer when Katniss is out kind of practicing her shot in the early stages of the film. With the colors, that was definitely something that was included in the creative brief at the beginning, you know, knowing that we were eight artists working across this collection of different artworks. I think there was an idea that they could each, you know, have a different feeling. So some of them are lighter, some of them are darker. And so for, for the artwork that I was working on, there was this inspiration from the sunsets and then maybe some white from the wedding gown. So there was these like peachy, light colored tones and then touches of blue to kind of counteract that. And when I saw Flaw's illustration coming together, she had a little palette there. Um, so that was the way that we were able to tie the two pieces of the artwork together as well. They gave me a pretty good creative brief. At first, the phrase was just gonna be, may the odds be ever in your favor. But then it felt a little bit too light, um, especially with my lettering style. And so the art directors had suggested, let's bring in the odds are never in our favor as another phrase in there. So now I have two phrases to work with, but luckily I have two sides. And so once that was introduced, I think that really unlocked something where I was like, okay, this is gonna be split screen. And that's when I started to incorporate like the lightning tree and things started to fall into place. I chose this lettering style that had serifs on it. The letters come to like little points at the ends. And so I wanted to do that mixed with using uppercase and lowercase letters as well, instead of all capitals. I wanted it to also feel dynamic, which is why the lettering isn't on a horizontal baseline. It's kind of going up. I thought that my best idea in the piece was like the little glimpses of the force field, the honeycomb kind of shape that you see peeking through the background. I thought that was a really fun Easter egg. I have a lot of experience drawing 
foliage, as you can see behind me. So that was definitely something that I felt totally comfortable tackling. I love drawing vines and leaves and things like that. The color palette for this, I mean, with the jungle being the arena in the movie that I was assigned, it was pretty apparent to me that from the start, there would be a lot of like deep and dark greens. Then I knew I could use pops of, you know, yellow for the buttercups and the gold that I used on the lettering um, and even the little like grid, the honeycomb in the sky. Those to me were like, okay, these are going to be the contrasting colors. They're the Easter eggs that also happen to be the smallest, but also like the brightest colors in the piece. Uh, and so that's kind of how I built the color palette. Again, the constraint of knowing it was a jungle, I was like, okay, green's going to be the color for this piece. One of the other concepts was where you see water, shoreline, sand, and then jungle, and then this kind of fog looming in the background, and the letters were kind of dotted throughout the jungle. But it wasn't as clear to read the lettering there, and so I think the concept we landed on made the most sense. I worked on the Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. The work I did will be featured on the third steelbook, and it will be, on the, it will be featured on the interior. Um, of the steelbook. I received uh, the brief and the creative direction. They wanted something that was black and white, monochromatic. They wanted to have white roses, a field of white roses, some key element surprises within the design, um, the, and of course the quote that had to be very uh, strong to capture the meaning of it. The process is that I make different sketches, I sketch out the letters, I'm very structural with the grid and then I just add like um, flourishes inside just to make like a little bit more organic and to connect the letters in a way that makes it, will make it a little bit more beautiful and um, the quote that I was assigned to do was a fire is catching and if we burn you burn with us so that's a very iconic very well-known quote from Mockingjay Part 1. Uh, we had some surprises key elements we had a Mockingjay bird we have of course the roses that fills up the whole page uh, like falling and um, we had a bow some arrows which is the preferred weapon of Katniss buildings after the bombing, the distractions and everything. So it is like a reference to that one. And we have a few skulls because I was inspired to add some skulls into it because it is the moment when Katniss visits District 12 and she witnesses for the first time what happened to her people after District 12 was bombed. So there are only key elements that are very referenced to the film. And also I was asked uh, to add some red uh, values into the work later on, uh, just to highlight different kind of elements to pop up. Lionsgate and the team did a wonderful job putting together a project board and we could just log in and see the progress and sketches that uh, other, all the artists uh, were putting uh, together. So that was very exciting. It was it was really fun and great to see what uh, she did on the cover and then to see mine very close together. Um, it really captures the whole feeling because her cover has a lot of white also into it, so it um, matches, I believe, very well together. So I've worked on the fourth film, Mockingjay Part 2, and my artwork appears on the interior of the steelbook. So when you open it up, beneath the discs, you'll see my art. I first created three concept sketches, each with a slightly different approach. And at that point, they're just pencil sketches, getting ideas down on paper. From there, the team decided that they liked several elements from each of those three concepts. And then the next step for me was to figure out how to fit those elements into one cohesive concept. And once that final sketch was approved, then I could move on to finals. It says, may your aim be as true as your heart is pure. There's such a beautiful irony during that scene. Um, so there's a little bit of Katniss's strength and her boldness to make such a bold decision, but there's also fury and vengeance. So I tried to incorporate that into not only the lettering, but the illustration. So I made the lettering really bold, but also have a certain softness to them. And surrounding those letter forms is Easter eggs throughout the illustration. 
The primrose flowers represent two things. The most obvious is prim, but those flowers also represent vengeance. Prim's death is what motivates Katniss's vengeance. You know, and if you look carefully at the illustration, you'll notice that the stems of those sweet primrose flowers are in blood red and they're thorned and kind of dangerous looking. Another Easter egg is the nightlock berries and pills and the parachute bombs. But then I also tucked in the M uh, symbol that was on the medic patch that Prim wore. And there's a single black pearl in the illustration, which represents that black pearl that PETA gave to Katniss and kind of kept it as a reminder and a reinforcement for what she needed to do. In the creative brief, red and yellow were the only colors that they knew that they wanted absolutely to include. I figured that they represented the primrose flower for the yellow, but also blood for the red. And then the real challenge was to make those colors work with such a quote for such a kind of dark, pivotal scene. So black became a really important role in that combination. It was only towards the end when I saw Tula's final piece and how she used the colors, and I let that inform how I used the colors in my piece. It really worked well in the end how Tula's work and my work came together. It was really the, the bond, <laughs> the glue that brought all, both of our pieces together. So Aaron from Lionsgate reached out to me and explained to me that it would be a map. For me, the map was always something that I just found really like really exciting and nice to look at. So just knowing that I would even be able to do something like that just got me excited immediately. So pretty much I was sent over a map just to kind of reference just where everything would be placed. For me, it was just kind of taking that map, but I ended up adding like these little water lines and then I changed the shape of the map a bit so it was a little more angular. From the beginning, I was getting a little more decorative and I was kind of trying to add all these little things, but the more I kept doing that, the less I just wasn't vibing with it. And as I went on, I realized that less actually is more. So that's kind of where I ended up. So in the beginning, we kind of decided we were gonna stay within gold. I started off the map actually a little bit more darker. The gold was a lot more deeper. But as we moved along, we saw everyone's work and maybe lightening it up a bit would look better. So that's kind of where I feel like it changed a little bit more was just kind of lightening up the gold and then later on we actually decided let's try it with silver see what that looks like and in the end we actually ended up mixing the two together and using both and honestly I it looks so much better than if it was just to be all gold everything was pretty smooth I would say the only thing for me was just to keep in mind that it was gonna be in four individual pieces so for the map itself, I had to make sure that certain emblems or little icons weren't gonna be cut off. So I feel like that was the only thing I had to kind of be thinking about. But other than that, everything was pretty smooth. So I did the outer box design, um, as well as the spines, and then the uh, discs. The main thing was to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the series, and just to celebrate you know, all the characters in the franchise of series that everyone loves. The outer box design, so that featured Katniss. We knew that we really needed to focus on Katniss. We decided to focus on her costume element, which was the wings. So having her up front center um, with the wing design, we just thought it was the perfect way to also demonstrate her costume and what she was known for, and then also a way to incorporate all the other characters. So it was just a really cool design element that we chose. Color is so important, it just conveys tone, it can convey mood. So definitely using a fire color scheme because Katniss is known as a girl on fire and there's a lot of flames in her costume, we just thought it would be really nice. And then having that really nice gold in the frame of her wings, we just thought it was a really great color scheme that would convey sort of the main mood of the films. And then the spines, so the spines we featured um, the Mockingjay symbol. Um, which is so iconic throughout the films, we knew it had to be somewhere prominent. And um, 
we decided to have it lit on fire. Yeah, just to incorporate all four films. And on the sides, the flame gets more intense as the movies go on. And that really just represented the revolution and just sort of the chaos that's going on in the, in the movies as they progress. We love throwing in Easter eggs in our, in our artwork and we thought that the perfect place to have Easter eggs was in the disc designs. Like the portraits of Snow and Katniss with the white rose and then um, another flower with the uh, finger salute symbol. We just thought it was a really cool place to incorporate those Easter eggs and fun ideas. I was blown away when I saw the final product. It just looks so cohesive in the end and it's just so interesting. Wow, at the end when I saw all the results I was like, oh my god, it's so beautiful. There's one thing when you see it on screen and you already think like, oh my god, this is amazing, it looks incredible, but when you see what it's gonna look like, the finished piece, like a physical copy, it's just amazing. I loved it. It's a collectible that people will cherish. Having something to hold in your hands that represents a story or an idea that excites you and has given you uh, different emotions in the experience of the story is awesome. เอ่อส่วนตัวคือรู้สึกว่ามันน่าทึ่งมากๆเพราะว่าจริงๆแล้วงานของอาทิตย์แต่ละคนเนี่ยจะมีกลิ่นอายที่ค่อนข้างเ